Los Angeles artist and I'm a painter, printmaker, and costume seamstress, sewer, lover of fashion. I um, have a small studio in Highland Park in Los Angeles where I have painting supplies where I make oil paintings. I also have a small, um, relatively mid-size etching press where I make a lot of intaglio prints, uh, dry points primarily, and also relief prints. And I also like to make dresses, couture dresses as sculptures. I'm from the east side of Los Angeles, which is east of downtown. It, a little community or neighborhood called Boyle Heights. That is where Self Help Graphics, one of the first print shops in that community, opened in the 1970s. It's primarily a Hispanic community. Um, I went to a private school elementary. I'm Me of Mexican descent and my grandfather, my grandparents immigrated here in the 1960s and settled in Boyle Heights, which is primarily Latino. Um, so I grew up with English was my second language. Uh, I spoke only Spanish in the house and I was always very creative and my mom had a fabric store down the street from where we lived where I spent a lot of my time when I wasn't in school making things, cutting all of her fabrics and sewing crooked little dresses for my dolls. But in my community there weren't many art schools that at least I was aware of. My mom didn't drive, we walked everywhere. Um, she wasn't really much of a bus person. So I realized, and this is a funny story, but I realized that I really was interested in, in pursuing art when I turned on PBS one day when I was 16 and in high school and saw Bob Ross painting and I saw a few other shows about painting and I immediately thought I want to try that and I had one of my friends from high school take me to an art store and we bought a set of paints and I came home right after and just tackled it. Right when I went back to school, um, one of my classmates had mentioned to me that there was a high school specifically for art, which I also tried and managed to get in and then realized that I preferred being with the other group of people. So I went back to my private school and pursued art full time in college. The work, my work, um, is, it deals with a lot of different themes, but the one that was the most prevalent is the pursuit of the American dream and the distortion. I realized that there were, there's an aspect of celebrity that most people emulate in the media, and I was started to question where those ideas came from, because the American dream is no longer about being able to settle in a little house and have a small family and be comfortable with the most basic things. It's about buying the big screen TV and having a nice car and flaunting one's successes, whether or not they're actually credible successes, considering we have so much credit available to us now. And I made the connection that European imagery, when the aristocracy and the kings and queens would have portraits commissioned of themselves. They were generating these messages of how powerful and how affluent they were. And I feel like a lot of our celebrity culture emulates that and people, the general public, try to pursue the same thing. I work in three mediums. My passion is oil painting. It is my, because my oil painting is very traditional and it's very rendered and I like to build layers to create luscious surfaces. It takes a really long time for me to finish a painting that I'm happy with, but it is my passion. However, I do a lot of printmaking because for me it's a great way to get ideas out, make work that people would be interested in of the same quality, something that is much more affordable and much more accessible. And I ventured into making dresses because since my mom owned a fabric store when I was a little girl, I grew up wanting to be a fashion designer. And I should mention that my grandfather was in car upholstery, custom car upholstery, all of his life. So he sewed all of his life, and I was constantly around rolls of fabric and sewing machines and watching him cut out patterns. 
here working with Sedia was great because I was able to take one of those images, one of those ideas, and use screen printing, which is also really highly used in, in the fashion industry. Um, I tried to make the print not only visually engaging, but also really colorful, and try to tie in some of those things that I have learned in working with printmaking, fashion, and oil painting. In this print, we have an imaginary landscape in which there is a mountain where there are these female figures and eyes looking above and somewhat protecting the, the goal, which is the house. And the house I use as an icon for the American dream. It represents real estate in general. And there are these little figures here that are trying to make their way up the mountain to pursue their dream. And it's somewhat dark and mysterious and it represents sometimes the unknown and perilous journey that many individuals take in order to find something, whether it be for a better life for themselves or for future generations. I'm very excited about where my work is going because I have finally made the connection to custom upholstery and silk screening or printmaking. So the next project I'm working on, I um, had 15 yards of blue, royal blue upholstery fabric printed with a gold pattern and I'm going to take all of that fabric and reupholster a Victorian couch. Um, my uncle, who is the predecessor of my grandfather, is going to help me with that and I'm very excited about incorporating not only my grandfather's um, trade but also my concepts into my work. And it's also highly important because when I think about my family and when they came to the United States to make a better life for the rest of us, I think about my grandmother's house and how my grandfather didn't want to buy it because he thought it was a dump. <laughs> and she was adamant about it and this couch has been in that house for a really long time so it's coming full circle for me. The devil's playthings, the devil's playthings Idle hands are the devil's playthings The devil lives deep down Deep down amongst the fiery rafters External screamers, unsainted sinners Those who let their souls get the best of them And now they live deep down